guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Maria. If you're new here, I do videos on professionalism, your budgeting, your finances, and lifestyle videos. If you like my videos, I would love for you to subscribe and join the fam. For today's video, I'm going to be talking about what I would do if I hated my job and I wanted out, like what would the process be that would bring me to the quitting stage. That's what I'm going to be filming for you guys today. I'm going to be talking about what I would do if I hated my job. So I have a whole list of notes on my laptop right here, so if you see me looking down, then I am looking down at my screen with a bunch of tips that I would use before quitting my job. So I feel like we've all been at a point where we struggle to like what we're doing at work. I feel like that's happened at least once in your life, found that that job is not for you. I don't think I could say that I hated any company I worked for. There were definitely some I didn't like, but none that I hated. Basically, I'm gonna talk about the processes I've gone through to like quit jobs and stuff like that, and what list I've gone through to know that it's the right decision to quit my job. So the first thing you need to do is ask yourself these questions. Do I need this job to pay my bills? Am I able to get another job that pays the same amount so you're not struggling at all or taking a lower rate? And do I want to be working in this field forever or is there something else that I'm passionate about? So as far as dissecting these three questions, if you need the job to pay your bills, then you're gonna need to stay for a while until you find a replacement job to pay your bills. You need to keep this job at least long enough where you can put in your two weeks and you have another job lined up because not being financially stable is a scary thing and nobody wants that. We all wanna be ahead of our bills, not behind on them. And then kinda of addressing the third question there, if you're not interested in this field and you wanna do something else, like start your own business for example, then you can always start it out as a hobby and see if this is something you like. So that is what I am basically doing with YouTube. I love it, obviously. I would love to make it a career someday. I'm at 110 subscribers right now, like not even monetized yet, so it's probably gonna be a while until I can actually, actually consider this a part-time or full-time job. But that is my ultimate goal. I love content creating. I love putting out new videos for you guys. So one day I hope that I can just make this my full-time thing so I can do like other things with YouTube videos and really be able to just like spend an entire day filming and doing things and taking you guys along the journey. So that is my goal for this channel, but it'll probably be a while. But that's what I'm saying with building your business or building your brand you have to wait a while for growth. So if you just like do that for a while, kind of for fun, kind of as a hobby or a side hustle, then eventually it could pay off. But until then you have to stay at your job in order to make a good income where you can pay your bills and stay financially stable. Another list of questions that I would always ask myself is, did you just have a bad day? Are you having constant bad days or do you just want more? So the reason I say this is I think a lot of times people relate like one bad day to hating their job and not liking it and thinking it sucks when it could just be one bad day that's kind of making you feel that way because you're in the moment feeling a lot of emotions about why you hate your job but you haven't really like truly processed it yet so it's important not to make like any crazy decisions right on the spot because you never know so it's important to process this stuff. So I like to kind of think like what this job has given me, would I miss it, what experience have I gotten from this job that I really couldn't get anywhere else. I think a good rule of thumb is if you take a couple weeks to kind of collect your thoughts and figure out what you like about it, what you don't like about it, then this can be very, very helpful for you and help you in the long run because if you just quit on the spot, if you just don't like your job and you quit on the spot, but it's only because you had a bad day, then that's probably a bad decision. Let your feelings kind of like wear off a little bit. Two weeks to kind of just like summarize like what you like about the job, what you don't, if it was just in the moment or you truly just feel that this wouldn't be a good job for you. And I think if you're having consistent bad days, that's a different story. There's clearly something wrong if you're never happy when you go to work. I always like to think like, 
when you go into work, are you thinking of it as like a good opportunity, as like something that you get to do? If you're not thinking of it in that way, and it's just kind of like a job you do, you go there, you come home, but you have no emotion about liking it or anything like that, like liking your coworkers, liking your bosses, liking the actual work you do, and consistently just having a bad mindset about the job. This may not just be the field for you, and it's okay to explore different fields. I know so many people who have majored in something and then they'll something and then they'll go and try it and realize it's not for them and do something completely different than what they majored in. So it's definitely okay to like branch out explore your horizons and everything so i think that's something that stresses out a lot of people but it's okay if this particular job is not for you two week mark when you've had time to cool down i think that's when it's safe to say if you if you really want to quit or it was just in the moment if i were to find that i still hated my job after this benchmark, then I would probably start applying for jobs. I would probably go on LinkedIn, Indeed, Glassdoor, just just anywhere where I can look for something that may be more suitable for me. I think something else that's really important to do is to update your resume, talk about like what you've been doing lately, because usually at any interview I've been at, the the last company I was at was my first question because they usually they're like, oh, why do you leave? Why do you leave this company? Why are you coming to us? Which is a question that I've gotten a lot. My response is, it's just I want to be in a different field. But I normally say if it's the same field, then it could just be like, you can kind of sugarcoat it and say, you know, like, this just wasn't really for me. I think that this place would be a much better fit for me. So that's a question I normally get asked about my previous employment. And if there's a gap in that, then people kind of like get confused. So it's definitely good to add it. So, so if your work environment isn't horrible and you can bear to stay for another two weeks, then I definitely recommend it. Always leave on good terms so then you can use that person as a reference and they can say that you work there and stuff and it's all good. It'll leave you way less stressed out in the long run because then when you need these people for references or people who the person needs to call just to make sure you work there, then they will most likely answer and put in a good word for you, which is good. It's just really important overall to make sure that you're financially stable. I know that a lot of people on YouTube say to not quit your job when you first start your channel because obviously it takes time to grow and that's the same thing for a small business as well. You can't expect to just like grow right away. You need time to sort of collect yourself and just like organize your business and a lot of people say it could take like two or three years before your business even kicks off to a livable wage so it's just important to keep that in mind because I would never want to see you guys struggle. It's super important to stay financially stable during the process when you're looking for a new job or a new career field. Your financial stability is always the most important thing because you don't want to drown in debt in your life. You always want to be on top of any bill you have, whether that be your mortgage, your student loans, or anything really that you just need to take care of financially. But that pretty much completes the video for today. I hope you guys enjoyed it. It was a little bit different from the YouTube stuff I've been doing lately, but I figured that it would be good to tell you guys. Everyone wants to be financially stable, especially in times like these where we're so uncertain about what's going on and what will be going on in the future. So I really hope you enjoyed this video. I really hope it helped you a ton. And if you like my content, please subscribe. It would really help my channel and I will see you in my next video. Bye.